The prophet Jeremiah said, I am full of the wrath of the Lord and I am weary of holding it in. Friends, we're going to look at what happened in New York and I pray to God that some sense of wrath, rage, fills you. I'm Randall Terry. This is Voice of Resistance. Welcome to the program, friend. I'm sure that you heard on the anniversary of Roe versus Wade that Governor Cuomo of New York signed into law the most aggressive, the most demonic, the most perverse and detestable law regarding the killing of children that has ever existed in this country. The bill allows a woman to kill her baby up to the day of birth, specifically. And it's not just for the life of the mother, which is a fallacy for a woman in the third trimester. Any baby in the third trimester that can live outside the womb can be taken out by a C-section if the mother is actually in danger. So it's a fallacy, but it's worse than that. It's the health of the mother. And the health of the mother is defined by Doe versus Bolton, the Supreme Court case that was a companion case to Roe versus Wade. In effect, health of the mother means anything that a doctor says. Psychological, financial, whatever. Emotional. Oh, I just don't want to have this baby. She's eight months pregnant. She's in a rough time. Maybe her hormones are raging and she's depressed. She can go and have a perfectly healthy, precious boy or girl that could happily, easily live outside of the womb. She can have that child murdered under this law. But not to be outdone by his own demonic evil, Governor Cuomo made, made it so that the law does not even require a doctor to kill the baby. It could be a nurse, nurse practitioner, anybody in the medical field. But it goes further. They took away penalties for somebody who kills an unborn baby accidentally. So if a man assaults a woman and she's pregnant and the child dies, no more protection of law for that child. This could even be a, a woman who wanted the baby. The New York State has officially refused to acknowledge that a human being made in the image of God, deserving of the protection of law, exists in the womb. It's demonic. It's of the highest order of evil. Now, I'm going to show you a few clips from this debauched setting. Look at them standing up and cheering. Listen to Mario Como's words. Watch him sign the bill. Assemblymember Deborah Glick, who has made an entire career out of being the first at the head of the crusade to fight for human equality and human rights for every human being. We have such respect for you. God bless you. Another round of applause for Deborah Gleick. Today is sweet because in a few minutes, I will sign this bill and another New York national precedent will be established, the most aggressive women's equality platform in the nation is going to be in law in this state. Because we shouldn't be here in the first place. We should not have a federal government that is trying to roll back women's rights to a point 47, 48, 50 years ago. This administration defies American evolution. We're supposed to be moving forward. We're supposed to be advancing. We're supposed to live and learn. We're supposed to be growing. And their entire perspective on the world is a retrospective. We're going to go back, take you back to the good old days instead of take us forward. Everything is about division by income, by race, by gender, just over and over and over. The same mantra. So that's the bitterness. We shouldn't be here. And the bitterness is how fast that political pendulum can swing. Just think, when we were debating the Reproductive Health Act, our Republican colleagues in the Senate said to us, it's unnecessary anyway, because no one would ever try to reverse Roe v. Wade. Remember that? noticed he was flanked by Sarah Weddington. You know, I want to say something to you. Please hear me. I am convinced that no technology exists on earth 
that doesn't exist in the spiritual realm. I'm certain that on the day of judgment, God has videotape accessible. And I am certain that on the day of judgment, when the people who signed this law and were standing there cheering, applauding, standing ovation, that when they are sent to hell, before they are sent to hell to burn in the lake of fire forever, unless they repent and turn to Christ, when they are sent to hell to burn forever, they will see the video clip. They will watch. And it's possible <clears throat> that once they're in hell, every once in a while, the demon that's involved in tormenting them is going to hit the play button and let them watch themselves cheering for the shedding of innocent blood. One of the souls that, one of the, one of the horrific sins that drag their souls into the lake of fire. And they'll be suffering in hell watching the clip of them cheering for the shedding of innocent blood. Maybe the devil will say, hey, it's really funny now, isn't it? <laughs> torment. It's a, it's a place of torment. Now, I quoted to you from the book of Jeremiah because something, um, I'm going to read a passage to you from Jeremiah. And something has occurred to me. We went up to Covington the other day to defend those kids. We've heard, of course, the news about this demonic law out of New York State. And the lack of rage and anger from the Christian community is, is like a disease. You understand there are times we should be angry? J Jesus got angry when his apostles, he said, the Bible says he was indignant. Indignant when the apostles tried to keep little kids away from him. He was angry at them. He was like, what are you doing? Let the little children come to me. He said, if someone causes a little child to stumble, it would be better for them if a millstone were hung around their neck and they were drowned in the depths of the sea. Jesus loves the little children and drowns their persecutors. That's our loving Jesus. He doesn't, he's not of California beach bum friends who walks around carrying a sheep in his arms. He is the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings. He is the judge of the world. And he said it would be better for someone who harms children to have a millstone tied around their neck and to be drowned. The lack of wrath in the Christian community shows a sickness in our soul. I'm going to take a break when we come back. I would advise, I'm going to read from the book of Jeremiah, but I'm going to show you some things, and this is going to be not for children, okay? Not child appropriate. Don't go away. I'm Randall Terry. This is Voice of Resistance. Where's your anger meter today, friend? Where's your anger meter? Introducing Roxy Guitar. If you're a guitar or bass player, whether you play acoustic or electric, check out Roxy Guitar. I've been playing for over 40 years and seen guitar stores all over America. I've never seen a store like Roxy Guitar. Roxy Guitar has over 700 guitars in stock, over 1,500 pedals, over 200 amps. For the beginner or price conscious buyer, there's Michael Kelly guitars. For the serious player or professional, Roxy Guitar has the finest selection of guitar lines I've ever seen. You know I love warrior guitars. Roxy Guitar has over 100 Warriors in stock. They have Heritage, GNL, Gretsch, John Sears, BC Rich, Duesenberg, Dean, legendary guitars at great prices, including pre owned Gibsons, Fenders, and more. Let them know you heard about Roxy Guitar from Randall Terry and receive 10% or more off your purchase on select items. Go to RoxyGuitar.com. If you have children in the room, small children, it might be good for you to, to have them go out. But w listen to me. The reason that this is so reprehensible before God is that a baby in the mother's womb, that should be the safest place in the world for a human being. In Ezekiel, when God was rebuking the people for killing their children, he said, you have done something so evil that I did not command it, neither did it enter my mind. God said, it's so reprehensible. I never even thought of such a thing. All right, here are, I'm giving you fair warning. Here are some babies that have been killed. These children were murdered. And these late-term so-called abortions 
where babies are burned to death. These are the crimes against God and these children that are being perpetrated by Governor Cuomo and the legislature of the state of New York that, vo that voted for this godless bill. This is evil and it should cause us to be filled with rage. All right, back to me. There's a lot of people who talk about the fact that America was started as a Christian nation. Certainly the Declaration of Independence is a Christian document. Certainly the four references to God only have meaning in a Christian context, in Christian theology that are in the Declaration, those four references to God. Clearly people fled Europe to come here and to self-consciously try and build a republic on the principles of the laws of God. And slavery in the South was a treachery and a was treachery and a betrayal of those principles. All right, we get all that. But there's still people today that are saying, we were a Christian nation, this is who we are, we've got to go back. Listen to me, we're not a Christian nation anymore. We are a pagan nation. There are many Christians living in this pagan nation. But for us to think that just because our forefathers founded this republic on a on, on biblical principles as best they could and that that somehow will earn us protection from the wrath of God. We're crazy. And I want you to think about this. What is the one nation that we know was started by God? Israel. We know that the temple built by Solomon was his house. We know that the Ark of the Covenant was there. We know that the sacrifices were instituted by God. But because of the shedding of innocent blood, because they killed their sons and daughters. The psalmist said that because they offered their sons and daughters to demons, that the wrath of the Lord was kindled against them and he brought nations against Israel to destroy it. I'm going to read to you from Jeremiah. So if we think that we can be protected from the wrath of God because of our Christian heritage, look at the Jews, people. <clears throat> Verse 6 of chapter 6. This is what the Lord Almighty says, cut down the trees and build siege ramps against Jerusalem. This city must be punished. It is filled with oppression. As a well pours out its water, so she pours out her wickedness. Violence and destruction resound in her. Her sickness and wounds are ever before me. Take warning, Jerusalem, or I will turn away from you and make your land desolate so no one can live in it. This is what the Lord Almighty says. Let them glean the remnant of Israel as thoroughly as a vine. Pass your hands over the branches again like one gathering grapes. Then Jeremiah says, to whom can I speak and give warning? Who will listen to me? Their ears are closed so they cannot hear. The word of the Lord is offensive to them. They find no pleasure in it. The, listen, the pagans, Mario Cuomo, these people are godless. And he dared to talk about this woman who was promoting the murder of children and so-called homosexual marriage. These are perversions and crimes and abominations to Almighty God. And then he dared to say, God bless you. He invoked the blessing of Almighty God on someone whose hands are covered with blood, who is, who is a child killer in their policies and who is promoting abominations. That's the level of contempt that they have for Almighty God and His law. And it says here, their ears are closed. They cannot hear. The word of the Lord is offensive to them. But it's worse than that. The word of the Lord is offensive to Christians. There are Christians who don't want to hear this. They don't want to hear the word of God. They don't want to hear about our guilt for not doing something, for looking the other way. They don't want to hear our, about our guilt for not having fought then the word of the Lord is offensive to them. Well, I just want to hear about the love of God. I want to hear about Jesus. They, Jeremiah said, but I am full of the wrath of the Lord. I cannot hold it in. God made him angry. It was the wrath of the Lord that was in him. We should be angry about these things. And if we're not, it shows something is sick inside of our own souls. Beg God to help you. Please, God, help me to, to be in line with how he feels about these things. Because we are his servants and we should be feeling what he is feeling, thinking what he is thinking, and then doing what he wants us to do. I'll be right back. Don't go away. I also want to speak tonight directly to Muslims throughout the world. We respect your faith. 
His teachings are good and peaceful. And those who commit evil in the name of Allah blaspheme the name of Allah. We have reaffirmed again and again that the United States is not and never will be at war with Islam. Islam teaches peace. Islam is a religion of peace. They are not Muslims, they are monsters. We've been told that Muslim terrorists have hijacked the peaceful religion of Islam. But Islamic art and literature tell a very different story. To know the truth, we only have to study the narrative of the founder of Islam, Muhammad, in his own words. Welcome back, friend. So Jeremiah said, I'm full of the wrath of the Lord. And then God said to him, pour it out, pour out that wrath on the children in the street and on the young man gathered together. Both husband and wife will be caught in it. And the old, those weighed down with years, their houses will be turned over to others, together their fields and their wives when I stretch out my hand against those who live in the land, declares the Lord. Now listen to me. These are, not all these people were killing their babies. But God was so enraged by what was happening and by the people, his people, who were not fighting it. In Leviticus 20, God said, if you know that this is going on and you don't try and stop it, he said, I'll punish those who are killing their children. Read it, Le Leviticus chapter 20, verses 1 through 5. He said, I'll punish those who kill their children and I'll punish everyone else who's standing around not trying to stop it. This is a paraphrase. And that's why when God destroyed the temple and God destroyed Jerusalem through the Babylonian army, everyone was taken captive. Everyone lost their house. Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, all those good kids, they were taken as hostages. They had to go as slaves to Nebuchadnezzar and they weren't killing babies. So we're all in danger. Our children, our parents, we're all in danger of the judgment of God because of the blood that is being shed by these demonic people like Mario Como and the assassins, the abortionists who do their bidding. Now listen to me, this is critical. From the least to the greatest, all are greedy, greedy for gain, that's money. Prophets and priests alike all practice deceit. They dress the wound of my people as though it were not serious. Peace, peace, they say, when there is no peace. Look at the deceit that's being practiced. Prophet and priest alike. You've got pastors all over the country saying, oh, God's blessing is on us, peace be with you. And they're teaching people how to live a prosperous life and how to have a peace-filled life. Listen, I want to prosper. I want to have peace. But when there's something so hideous going on, it becomes a level of deceit because they're not speaking the word of the Lord. They're not speaking from the heart and the mind of God. But perhaps even more detestable, the, they're greedy for gain, for money. And now you're going to have 501c3 organizations who raise money off of child killing. They're going to say, oh, look, it's already happening right now. It's happening right now. Oh, look at what's happening in New York. If you feel bad, send us money. They're not going to go up to New York and fight. They're not going to fight to try and take Mario Como and all these God haters out of office because they're a 501c3. They're a nonprofit a corporation which by law cannot be involved in elections. So they cut a deal with the devil to not try and get wicked people out of office in exchange for a tax exempt gift. Oh, yes, your tax, your gifts are tax deductible. Listen, I'm not opposed to tax deductible gifts. It's for a school or if it's for a music program or feed the hungry, something like this. But not when it's something that is inherently political that involves the life and death of little babies. So now we're seeing prophet and priest alike are greedy for gain. They practice deceit. So when you get these fundraising letters from 501c3 groups saying, this is horrible, we're going to stand for babies, just please know that it's a deceit. Please know that they're greedy for gain. They are they are like vultures that are feeding off of the dead babies of New York, using it to raise money. All they got to do is become a PAC or, a five, or get rid of their 501c3 and just say, we're going to fight in the election process. They can raise money. They just can't give away tax deductible contribution receipts. That's it. Then you'll know that they mean business. 
Until then, it is an offense. It is an offense to heaven to raise the money off of dead babies knowing that you have cut a deal that you won't try and get people out of office who are perpetrating this crime. I'll be right back. Don't go away. And don't give money to those groups if you really want us to see the end of child killing. Don't go away. What would Mohammed do? Islamic Terrorism Explained is the best movie series documentary ever produced on the life of Muhammad and Islam. How do I know? Because it's what critics are saying. John Moore, radio host and author said, I learned more from what would Muhammad do about Islam and Islamic terrorism than I've learned from everything I ever read and watched in my entire life. Best-selling author, Dr. Bill Warner said, what Would Mohammed Do is the best movie series, TV production on the life of Mohammed and Islamic terrorism that has ever been produced. Friends, this is what the experts are saying. No one has ever done what we've done. I encourage you to get one, two, four copies. Call 304-289-3700. That's 304-289-3700. Or order it at the address or the website that you see on the screen. Introducing Roxy Guitar. If you're a guitar or bass player, whether you play acoustic or electric, check out Roxy Guitar. I've been playing for over 40 years and seen guitar stores all over America. I've never seen a store like Roxy Guitar. Roxy Guitar has over 700 guitars in stock, over 1,500 pedals, over 200 amps. For the beginner or price conscious buyer, there's Michael Kelly Guitars. For the serious player or professional, Roxy Guitar has the finest selection of guitar lines I've ever seen. You know I love Warrior Guitars. Roxy Guitar has over 100 Warriors in stock. They have Heritage, G&L, Gretsch, John Sears, BC Rich, Duesenberg, Dean, legendary guitars at great prices, including pre-owned Gibsons, Fenders, and more. Let them know you heard about Roxy Guitar from Randall Terry and receive 10% or more off your purchase on select items. Go to RoxyGuitar.com. Okay, so what do we do? What can you do? You. You have the opportunity to let the wrath of the Lord fill you. You have the opportunity to speak truth. The prophetic office doesn't, you don't have to be a prophet to prophesy, okay? You could go down to an abortion mill in your area and scream, don't kill your baby. I personally have saved over 50 children from death. I adopted one of them. Over 50 children from death just by standing in front of an abortion mill begging for babies' lives. You can write a letter to the editor. You can talk to the people at your church. You can hand out videos to the people at your church. You can send uh, YouTube links to, to, to films that show the truth about child killing. There's so much that you could do to raise your voice, to be like a Jeremiah, to cry out, to cry out. In fact, look at what um, verse 17 says. I appointed watchmen over you and said, listen to the sound of the trumpet. But you said, we will not listen. The issue is, will we be the ones to blow the trumpet in Zion? Will we sound the alarm on God's holy mountain? <clears throat> I'm begging you for your prayers. I told you last week, we're going up to Covington. I'm telling you now, we're going to New York. We're putting plans together. We are going to go to New York and create a firestorm. And I, I, I know how to do this, people. I know I've been doing this for years. I know how to get attention and to decry an evil for time and for eternity, to jar the souls of the complacent or the evil and to have a witness on the day of judgment. I beg your prayers. If you want to come to New York with me, go to our website and contact me. Go to randallterry.com. If you can help us financially, it's going to, we have to take a very large staff. We have to take a lot of people because we're going to do an event that's going to really jar people. We need help financially. You know who I am. If you can give us 50 or 100 or 500 or $1,000, go to randallterry.com and make a contribution online, please. And I promise you, we will fight with the resources you give us, all right? We'll go to the front lines. Just be our supply line, please. God bless you.